Chris, if the D rock comes across the middle on pattern, are you going to kind of let up a little bit because you don't want to? Your old teammate? Uh, no, no, no. You know, I'm, I'm stepping out on the field, looking to give my all every play. Uh, you know, uh, D Rock. You know, he used to be on our team. Me and him, pretty good friends. But once we get in between those lines, it's, it's time for me to do what I do best. Chris, how much did you guys get challenged by Art? So I know that front was so dominant. Was there a lot going on downfield that we weren't paying attention to because the quarterback was getting chased? Yeah, it was. A, it was a challenge. Uh, a lot of the receivers were uh, running, uh, running pretty good routes. And things like that, but uh, you know we, we prepared a lot for the kind of uh, offense that they run. You know they got a great offensive coordinator, a uh, very mobile quarterback with a uh, big deep threat arm. You know um, pretty good receiver, six teams, uh, pretty good. Uh, we knew we was gonna have to key on him if we were gonna be able to win the game, win the game, and things like that. So it took a lot of preparation and things like that. There's definitely a lot more going on in the back end that y'all probably saw just because of the uh, front end doing their job. But you know uh, it's all it's a bunch of moving pieces back there, and uh, everything got to be perfect um, for us to be able to execute. Chris, I'm not sure how much you've dived into all the film yet, but what have you seen from D-Rob this year that, that you know, may be different than what he was in the past? Uh, uh, D-Rob, you know, I mean, he's always been a great player, a great receiver, been a guy that could uh, take, the, take the short ball and, um, and take, it, take it a far away, catch deep balls and things like that. Very good receiver, very mobile. And uh, that's something we're going to have to key on during this week. Uh, we know he's a, a great receiver just based off him being on our team and things like that. So we know him pretty well, and we know we're going to have to key on him if we're going to be able to win this game. How hard is it to, to cover back there when you have a guy that can scramble like Nick's does in terms of, you know, take the play might be over and stuff? Yeah, uh, Nick makes a, a bunch of amazing plays back there. Uh, he just got that hit factor about him. He's able to get away from all the D linemen and, and make plays down the field. You know, it's, it's pretty hard, you know, um, but I, I figure that emphasis for us this week is going to be able to plaster down the field. You know, when that quarterback gets to running, we can't focus on him. we got to focus on those receivers because, you know, while he's scrambling, he's looking downfield looking for receivers to throw the ball to. we got to be there to cover him because if we come off, he'll make you pay. Can you, can you contrast – this Auburn game for you versus where you were a year ago going into this game. What you what where, how much were you playing? What units were you on? And, and just how far do you think you've come in it? Oh uh, yeah, uh, I pretty uh, this is pretty kind of the same kind of week for me because uh, like I said uh, last week last year going into Auburn there was an injury into our secondary and I was pretty much getting first team reps um, that whole week and things like that. So I was very very well prepared. You know uh, a lot a lot more special teams than I am now, but I am still on special teams now. And I'm still honing in on that um, that aspect of my game and things like that. But you know, uh, like I said, I got a lot more experience coming to this game and, and a lot more confidence just having many more games under my belt than I did during last year this time, and I hope it, it can help me out. Chris, maybe, maybe no extra motivation is needed for a rivalry game, but for an offense preparing to play you guys right now when you're doing back to back shutouts, do you think that there's extra motivation to try to put a thing in your armor to to show that you guys can be. Well, well yeah, you know, um, every team we play, we, we figure that we're going uh, to gonna get their best, and um, they're going to get our best day in and day out. So, you know, um, it's, it's extra motivation for them, extra motivation for us, because, you know, um, every game during the season is a playoff game, and we both want to win this game very badly. And we know that's a robbery that's important to our fan base and us and our coaches, and we want to go out there and get a W. Christian, what about uh, the way you guys are, as far as the discipline goes, as far as the way you guys play defensively, kind of gives you confidence? You can be successful you know, defending both legs. Yeah. Um, uh, well, you know, we gonna we gonna get in today. We gonna uh, uh, prepare our game plan for the week on uh, you know Bo Nix and their arm offense. You know, they got a lot of great players, as we know from playing them last year, and uh, not any different any other team we gonna play this year. So you know, we gonna get uh, going today, hone in on the game plan, get it started, and continue to build throughout the week. You know, I know our coach is gonna put us in a good position. All the players are locked in and they're ready to go. Like I said, we're going to go to the doctor today on last week and fix everything that uh, we messed up on last week. And, you know, we're going to get prepared for this. Did you watch the game, Derek? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, caught a, I caught a good amount of it, and that's yeah. what I'm saying. I've seen a lot of those great plays that Bo Nix made, and, you know, that's the thing that probably we're going to get into today. Coach, before you coach baseball, different sport, but mm -hmm. when, we're, when we're playing a team of beating, mm -hmm. you almost kind of go, hey, what do you need to work on to get better? Mm -hmm. Don't just be happy with winning, you know, not yeah. get better. You guys go through that. You guys are responsible to leave. What do you work on yeah. the rest of the game to get better for them? That's pretty much our whole memo. That that's that's like all we go through. I mean, even during the game, you know, our coaches 
but we didn't have we didn't have any uh, turnovers this game. So uh, all the way up to the very end, we kept talking to the defensive players, coaches uh, putting in our hand that hey, we need to we need to get a turnover today. We, we trying our best to be elite at every game on every game. And, you know, we weren't able to do that. And, you know, that's just um, how the game went. But you know, we always focus on improvement. You know, that's just like our whole mantra. You know, and that's how we able to do the things that we do. Chris, it was the Auburn last year that. that uh, Richard got tossed for ejecting, mm -hmm. or, uh, ejected for targeting, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. How much do you think that experience, plus you know what you gained late in the season with him out, uh, you know, has it kind of helped you, you know, jumpstart into this year? Yeah, I mean it was very, very important, you know, and I never realized the importance of getting experience in games. So I was actually into one, and you know, going throughout those five games that I got last year really, really helped me for this season. And I, I appreciate it for it. Hey Chris, uh, the defense obviously gets a lot of love and. Obviously, so but offensively this weekend, the uh, offensive line we get a lot of push and run the ball well. Can you kind of see the different kind of cases of that holding ball mentality that yeah. the swagger that John has? Yeah, doing? yeah. Like I said, I see, I see that, I see that every day. So you know, that's uh, definitely what's expected of them, and they went out and executed like they should. Chris, what's Dan Jackson like in the DB room? Like, what's he like? Playing? Dan is a, like one of the most humble guys I ever met. And, you know, he goes out there and he works hard every day. You know, he, he doesn't take a day off. And that's something that I really respect about Dan. Um, he hones in on his crab or on and off the field. He's a very great guy, amazing person. And we became great friends very quick. You know, he's gelled very well with us. How much more prepared would you say you were, I guess, going back to that whole contrast of a year ago? Mm -hmm. right? Physically now versus then and also just from uh, – an experience standpoint now versus then? Yeah, like I said, I think the most important thing was uh, my experience. Of course, um, you know, you're going to get better physically every year, but that experience was the most important thing for me. You know, I didn't I didn't really have that last year in the Auburn game, so that's really going to come in clutch for me this year. Um, and, you know, my, my communication skills are a lot better this year, and that's going to help us out a lot. I guess physically, I, I, I want to get back. I, I think you answered it in the spring, but how much weight did you put on? You just look a lot bigger in the upper body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I put on, I put on about ten pounds. I'm fluctuating around there right now. And, you know, uh, our strength staff does a good job of keeping that weight on us and keeping us strong during the season. So uh, it helps us help us stay physical in games and be able to make plays on the defensive end of the ball. Chris, I was kind of playing with uh, Payne Walker. I'll comment off that uh, Dan Jackson comment. Yeah. Well, Payne is, you know, he's also one of those very humble, humble guys. He give me a lot of trouble on punt return in practice, you know. I'm trying to hone in on the, um, on the dog position and things like that. And the Payne's uh, give me a great look. Um, so during the game, I'm well prepared. Chris, just following up on Dan Jackson, you know, the main curve said he went from 12 to 6 on the depth chart. That's also just mm -hmm. called the athletic. Yeah. How have you seen him, I guess, seize that opportunity, you know, for lack of a better word, kind of work his way into the road? Yeah, like I said, man, you know, Dan's a very humble guy. He's a, a very, very hard worker. And uh, everything that he's done to be able to put himself in this position, I'm very, very proud of him. He's, he's only going to continue to go up. You know, Dan's a great player, and he's going to be a great player for this university for a long time. What is your favorite you know, Dan Jackson story? I need to think about it. I need to think about it. I mean, it's plenty of stories, but, you know, just all the great plays that he makes in practice that you guys don't see. You know, obviously, y'all were able to see him get a um, – a block point in the game today, but you know, um, I seen Dan and I'm right behind him and on uh, on punt block return. I seen him do that 50 times throughout the week. You know, work that thing, and you know, it's great to see him uh, his work pay off. You know, and he's uh, gonna continue to pay off because you know he's so humble. He's a hardworking guy. Just talking about that punt block, sort of take me through the, I guess the X's and O's at that play. How did that work? And was it, I guess, specifically drawn up for you know for Dan to be the guy that. Yeah, well, it was specifically drawn up for our position, and you know, um, it's just a it's just a, a certain way that uh, our uh, special team coordinators drew it up. Um, they felt like the blitz could work throughout the week. And, you know, we have been working it since Monday, and um, it came through in the clutch. It worked pretty well, and you know, I seen those guys do that constantly. Like I said, I seen it happen about probably 50 times before we were able to do it, and to see them go out there and execute it was just. It was amazing, and then once I figured out it was Dan, like I just went even more crazy. Because, I was gonna say, so it was specifically designed for Dan to be the guy that broke through. Yeah, 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 for, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, you know, he comes sec second level of uh, and things like that. You know, it was specifically designed for him to make the play, and he did. Did you come up on Bigsby at all last year, and, and what makes him different as a running back? I know you play a lot of great backs every week, but. The tank looks like a guy that could be special. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a uh, he's a very special player. I know he put uh, my high school out, Hakeville Charter, the year after I left out of the playoffs, basically by himself. You know, um, he did. He's a, he does a very good job running the ball and things like that. I think I had a, a 
probably one talk on him last year, thing like that. But I didn't really get to see him too much. I mean, like, he, like, like I said, we all know he's a great player. He can run the ball very good, very special player. And he's another one of those guys that we're going to have to hone in on if we want to win this game. Chris, I feel like every Monday we kind of heard this game of going to the doctor. And, you know, where, where did that come from? Who kind of came up with that idea? Yeah, well, I hear it most. I mean, I don't, I'm not sure who it specifically came from, but I hear it most from Coach Lanny. You know, every Monday, like you say, you say, what are we going to do? Everybody say, you know, we're going to go to the doctor. And it's all about fixing the things, like I said, that y'all don't see. You know, y'all see the guts, uh, the guts and the glory on Saturday and things like that. But it's many, many things that we mess up on, and, you know, we focusing on proving that. And that's the only way that we continue to stay good and, and I'm, I'm going to go where we're going to go if we want to you know, throughout the season. Yeah. Chris, uh, Curry was talking about Syracuse about the defense, maybe not having a superstar. Maybe the definition of superstar is kind of, Depends on who's saying it. Yeah. Is there something to this defense's strength being that there's not like one, two, three guys that you're depending on in every game, and if that guy's not off, like it's spread out? Yeah, uh, well, you know, like I said, like everybody, everybody is committed to doing their job. You know, one of the things for this week uh, during Arkansas was low commitment. You know, uh, the way our defense is working, everybody has to be has to be in the right place at the right time for us to be able to make plays. Like I said, uh, we might not have a specific superstar, but you know we got a great, a bunch of great players that are willing to do their job at maximum level, and you know it's, it's going to pay off. It's a lot of guys that sacrifice during certain games for other guys to make plays, and you know it's all about that selflessness, you know, and that's and that's the part of the mission that we built throughout the whole season and preseason. It doesn't seem like I mean, you know, it's not like you're expecting. It's not like there's a Chase Young for every week. He's going to have a big game. Yeah. There's a, you know. Yeah, 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 and I think that's just a testament to all the work that we put in throughout the season. And, you know, and those four pillars that we created during the offseason, you know, it's part of our connection and things like that. And it, we took a long time building that, and it's paying off. Okay, that's all the time we have for us for today. Thanks, y'all. Thank you. Appreciate it.